So now that we can actually upload the files, that's awesome, but we also need to get them back. And um, I've made some changes inside the user controller when we actually um, get a user. So when we find me, we also want to get back the photo here. That's kind of the change that I did. Um, this means that you'll only get the user photo back if you're actually, um, it's only the profile picture you'll get back. So I'm not going to get it if I pull out all users, then you won't get the user photo back. And that's at least the goal of it. So I'm going to make some more restrictions than I have right now so that the user photo is only pulled out if you're actually uh, me <laughs> pulling that out. Okay, so what's in here? I'm saying if I actually am a user and then I'm using the request that we talked about earlier, this guy right here, the request, which is the basic uh, simple HTTP request library so we can make some simple requests. And I'm going to actually pull down the image. So I'm using the URL that I got from OpenShift to actually pull down the image. And remember to add this encoding null to get an actual image down or things will start messing up. It won't be a base64 image you'll get down. I figured that out. So you need to add this encoding null. So here I'm getting back the image as the response and the body. Okay, great. Now I have an image. What I want to do is if I don't get a status code different than 200 and I don't have any errors, then I want to add a prefix to my image. So that's the one I showed you earlier where it says data, um, the type of the image, colon, semicolon base64. That's what you see in front of any base64 encoded image. And then I'm going to take the body and convert it into base64. That's how you do this. And then I'm going to wrap them together and set not the user in the database, but the user I'm about to return to whoever made the request. So here I'm setting the photo of that user and then I'm sending a response back with the actual user with now the actual photo on it. That's all I had to do. Now I'm actually returning the image to the user in the call of me. But as I said, I'm not quite satisfied because I don't want the other ones to get the actual image back. So let's have a look at, for instance, a show here. That's pulling back all data right now. And I don't want that. So I'm going to add a comma. I'm going to say I don't want salt. I definitely don't want password. And I don't want photo either to be sent back. It'll take too much space. It's not necessary at all. I'm going to do exactly the same for, um, for finding all my users here. So here's the index one. Same idea. I don't want to pull out the photo here. It's really important that you remember stuff like this. So I encourage you to try and see if you can make sure you don't pull out too much data to the user. Not only will it take up space, but in this case, maybe the photo is private. So when I say show all users, maybe I want the photo, but maybe I don't. You'll have to figure that out yourself. So that's all I had to do. Now I can actually download the photo, not as a URL. That was another possibility, but I've actually taken the photo and converted here on the server, meaning the backend takes care of the URL converts into just the image and sends that back, right? So I've just made it so that instead of having to use, um, pull out just the URL, I actually send the actual photo back to the user on the client side. And that just gives the server side the power, meaning that the server side can take care of the image and do whatever it wants to it before it returns it to the user. So I just wanted to show you that. And that's pretty much all we had to do. One more thing I wanna add before we end this lesson. And that is here under Express, I added something new. I had to add the URL encoder and the JSON, I had to give it a new limit of 50 megabytes, whatever you wanted. But the default settings was not enough. I think it's set to one megabyte, something like that, even lower maybe. So I set it saying that you can actually, you can figure out how to um, pass JSON of up to 50 megabytes. That's a huge JSON document. But it needs to be a bit bigger because we're actually sending base 64 back and forth now, and that is a bit more data than the JSON body parser is set to default. So if you get an error saying um, the limit is exceeded, you have to change this. And of course, I also added a small image in my seeding. So just to show you one of these Cloudinary images, here's the one that I'm setting up default. HTTP, Cloudinary, El Builder, the image, the upload path, the version, and the very specific image uh, name which is of course unique for each image. So that's pretty much it.
we're done. So um, for the next lessons, I will just start cleaning up the code. I have a few places that I'm not satisfied with. I'm going to show you what we can clean up and how to do it. And then I'm going to um, have some more fun with actually storing files before I move into testing. It will come. I promise you, I will show you testing. But I want to do more file storage. See you next time.